Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy Martin, the designer, back with another video. I know it's been some time since we did a video, but we've been very busy optimizing the game behind the scenes, and that's exactly where I'd like to take you in this video, so you can get a better idea of what exactly we've been doing. This video is going to be quite technical, but I think you'll learn a lot. Actually, you know what, I think I'll split this up into two videos, so it's easier to take in. So, what does it mean when we say game optimization? What is the goal? The goal is to achieve a high and stable FPS rate, meaning frames per second, on a wide range of hardware, while not compromising on the visual quality of the game too much. Stable meaning, the FPS will always be more or less 60, and not drop from let's say 6 to 10 when I look left for example. This will make the game accessible to a wider range of people, not only those with the most up-to-date PCs. This in turn will give us a larger player base, and more sales, which will translate into more money for development of the game. To understand how to achieve high FPS, or more precisely a high frames per second rate, we first need to understand what the keyword FPS is, and to do that we need to go back and understand how an old movie projector works. A projector consists of a light source, in this case a light bulb, a film that rolls in front of the light source, a lens to focus the light, which results in a moving picture or better said, the illusion of a moving picture. Let's take a closer look at the film. As we can see, it consists of a sequence of pictures. Each picture is called a frame. There are 16 frames in this sequence. In each frame, the position of the horse is slightly different to the frame prior to it. When all the frames are played back in one second, we perceive the picture to be moving. That's because our brains are very good at blurring images together and filling in the missing data. That's why there have been cases in which people have seen like the face of Jesus Christ in a piece of toast and then they sold a piece of toast on eBay for like $25,000. When we play back 16 frames in a second, the frame rate is 16 FPS, meaning 16 frames per second. And as we can see, the animation of the horse running at 16 FPS is very smooth. Now check out what happens when I reduce the frame rate to a quarter of that, which is 4 FPS. The animation is very laggy. So what have we learned? The higher the FPS, the smoother our animation will look. In computers, frames are generated by our video card and sent to the monitor, which displays them. So why is 60 FPS the default benchmark for PC games? Well, to understand that, we have to go back to the invention of television. Television screens initially used cathode ray tubes, or CRT for short. A CRT tube is basically a glass pyramid with a vacuum inside it. Electrons are fired from the rear of the tube, travel through it and hit the front where they appear as a white dot in the middle of the screen. As you can see, my electron path is slightly bent upwards. How can that be? Well, it turns out if you place a magnet next to the tube, you can bend the path of the electrons and change the dot's position on the screen. If we place a magnet on the top and bottom, we can control the dot's movement along the y-axis, or up and down. And if we place a magnet on the sides, we can control the dot's movement along the x-axis, or left and right. If you've ever seen a disassembled television and wondered what the orange wires on the back are, well, they're the electromagnets that control the dot's position. There's an excellent video on how CRT televisions work on a channel called Technology Communications. The link is in the description box below and I highly recommend that you go watch it later on if you're interested in how CRT televisions work. So if we place the dot in one of the top corners of the screen, move it to the other side in a line, then move it down and repeat until we reach the opposite corner of the bottom of the screen, while varying the brightness of the dot very quickly, we can fool our brain into thinking it's seeing a static image. While in fact, if you filmed the screen with a 20,000 FPS camera, there would be no image, just a dot moving across the screen really quickly. One cycle of this is called a frame. But how do we know when the dot has reached the edge of the screen, and it's time to start a new line? How do we know? when the dot has reached the opposite corner at the bottom and it's time to start a new frame? Well, the answer is time. We need a very precise clock. Then we know that if it takes, for example, one one thousandth of a second for the dot to travel from left to right, we know it's time to start a new line. And if we know it takes, for example, 28 thousandths of a second to draw a complete frame, we know it's time to start a new frame. 
we can time all of it. The problem is, in the olden days, building precise clocks like this would be very expensive. So what they did was, they used the frequency of the power grid, which is 60 Hz in the United States. It's extremely precise and free. The refresh rate of displays, meaning how quickly they can display a sequence of frames in a second, is measured in Hz. 1 Hz means 1 cycle per second. So if you were to flip your light switch on and off with your finger once every second, you would be doing it at a rate of 1 Hz. Flip it 10 times and you would be doing it at a rate of 10 Hz. So since the grid in the US is 60 cycles in 1 second, meaning 60 Hz, the TVs had to cycle 60 frames a second to keep in sync with the power grid. At this point in the video, I think it's worth mentioning that the statement people can only see a maximum of 60 FPS is false. It is also worth mentioning that while North America's power grid runs at 60 Hz, the rest of the world runs at 50 Hz. That's why North America uses the NTSE standard and the rest of the world uses PAL. And that's why a TV from America would not work in Europe and vice versa. But since computers came from America, screens have been standardized to 60 Hz. We are now well past the Japanese quartz revolution, which made extremely precise clocks cost practically nothing. So these days, it doesn't matter where you plug your monitor into, the refresh rate is still going to be 60 or more in your models, since it no longer relies on the power grid for timing, but has its own internal clock. As you can see, my monitor can run on 100 to 240 volts at 50 or 60 Hz. But if we go to the settings, even though my monitor is plugged into the power outlet here in the Czech Republic, whose power grid runs at 50 Hz, the refresh rate is still 60 Hz. Therefore, since all monitors now run at at least 60 Hz, or more, in case of the newer models, meaning they cycle through 60 frames a second, it makes sense to send them 60 FPS from the video card. And that's why 60 FPS has become the gold standard in PC games. What if the monitor runs at 60 Hz and receives less than 60 FPS from the video card? Well, if you've ever wondered what those long chips around your GPU are, they're VRAM. Inside VRAM are frame buffers, which are a section of the memory that the GPU produces the final rendered image in. That image is sent to the monitor and displayed on it. While that is happening, the GPU is already rendering the next frame in the second frame buffer. If it doesn't render it on time, it just sends the same frame from frame buffer 1 to the monitor again. And once it does render the second frame, the frame buffer switch places, the second frame buffer becomes the first buffer, sends the image to the monitor, and the next frame is rendered in buffer 2, which was previously 1. What if the FPS of the card is more than the refresh rate of the monitor? Well, then you get something called tearing, which means that two frames have been displayed at the same time and there is a mismatch. To fix tearing, we have V-Sync, vertical synchronization. The video card sends the monitor a frame, the monitor displays it, and sends a signal to the video card that is ready for another frame. This means that you are effectively locked at the refresh rate of the monitor, which in this case is 60 Hz or 60 FPS. The best thing to do is to limit your FPS with third-party software, such as MSI Afterburner. Consoles have their FPS limited to 30. Since they use TVs as their display, TVs do some smart post-processing, called frame interpolation, where an additional frame is generated and placed in between every two frames, giving you 60 FPS. Kinda. The last thing we need to understand are milliseconds, which is the time it takes for the PC to render every frame. One second consists of 1000 milliseconds, which might be confusing since we're used to one minute having 60 seconds and so on. So to get 60 FPS, we need to divide 1000 milliseconds by 60, and that leaves us with a maximum of 16.6 milliseconds to render every frame, if we want a stable FPS of 60. So here we are in the editor getting around 60 FPS, and it's taking us around 20 milliseconds to render each frame. That's our entire budget blown on just the environment. But what about when we add cars? and effects, and zombies, it might take an additional 5 milliseconds to render those and then we're over our 16.6 millisecond budget and our frame rate will start to decrease. What we really ought to do is just use up 3 quarters of our budget for the environment, which would be 12.45 milliseconds, and leave a quarter, which would be 4.15 milliseconds, free for the other things such as the cars and the zombies and the effects. So once all this is combined in game, we have a guaranteed FPS of 16. 
In the next video, we'll have a look at what we've been doing to actually optimize the game. So meanwhile, subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, and head over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash to support us, and I'll see you guys later. Out, be the same.